Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Level 1 News. Today is... Was it the 14th? Wow. I thought... To, for some reason, I thought that was Friday. I guess the 17th is Friday. Uh, today's a weird episode. Uh, Ryan is in quarantine. And uh, the rest of us are here at the office. It's a weird reversal. Also, I cannot keep earbuds in my ears. I have weird-shaped ears. Elf ears. We're yeah. doing it all along. <laughs> they just don't stay... I've never had a pair of earbuds that stay in my ears. I always have to get the ones that go over. Devember is currently happening. We uh, we narrowly avoided a crisis with the Minecraft server zero day that is currently circulating. Oh, yeah, not great. Yeah, you know, griefer's gonna grief. But uh, thanks to Linode for sponsoring that and Devember and a whole bunch of prizes. You've only got two weeks left ish in De- Devember. Uh, yeah, De- De- it's going fast. You need it to is. build your projects. You need to post on the forum. My God, what's wrong with you? Why aren't you participating in Devember? Also, you only have a limited amount of time to get your Christmas gifts, which is something I need to it tell myself. It doesn't if you <laughs> It's had, only Devember. Yeah, I mean, just forget, you know. <laughs> Disregard everything. Only Devember. So. Ryan, can you show us your cats since you're at home today? It's... They're hungry right now. Toaster. He's not, he's not here. Toaster. <laughs> get in here, buddy. Get in here. here. Oh, there he is. I can see him. (gasps) What a good kitty cat. What a good boy you are. Uh, Your cats always surprise me with how enormous they have become. Yeah, I always, I think of them perpetually as if they're still teenage cats. Look at this fat piece of, mm, piece of garbage. That's what you are. Not what I usually (laughs) call you because we'll get demonetized. (laughs) (laughs) Hmm. He's a good boy. What a good boy. A reminder that we have t-shirts with toast and crouton on them at store.level1.com. <laughs> There's also a few models of KVM that are still in stock by some miracle. <laughs> they disappear as quickly as we can restock them. <laughs> as quickly as we can buy the components that go into them. Thanks, global situation. Speaking of uh, global situations that uh, are under no one's control... Our first story is about uh, somebody who's not going to taste freedom anytime soon. <laughs> or anything other than gruel and tepid water <laughs> do and you, people's boots. Do you want to read the headlines because you're remote or do you want me to? I mean, I can read them well, too. Chris do it. Yeah. Right. UK opens door to Assange extradition to US on spying charges. Rip in peace. This just broke this morning. We're recording this on a Friday. So Re- Remember when everybody was making fun of him? When he was like, wait a minute. These girls from Sweden, it's a honeypot. They're trying to extradite me to America. And, and it was like, that's insane. Why would you even think that? That just sounds crazy. It doesn't sound plausible at all. And yet. And here remember we are. The, the crazy kid who they used against him who turned out to be like a pedophile or something? Oh, yeah. He's definitely not a worse human being than this person. <laughs> And definitely. definitely wouldn't have done anything to get away from those charges <laughs> or said anything. <laughs> it's so out in the open. It's astonishing. It really is. Uh, there's a couple. There's there's some rubber stamp procedures that some officials in the UK have to approve. So like the the secretary, home minister, or something something has to still approve this. But no one is expected that they're going to complain. Which is really, I mean, you got to admit that would be political suicide. Yeah. I mean, if the UK is, is doing this, surely they'll get rid of Prince Andrew, too, right? <laughs> oh, they'll they'll cooperate Andrew. with the authorities there, right? Oh, that's just, that's, that's almost <sighs> like justice for thee and not, not for, for me. me. Or, Prince Andrew is literally who they're trying to protect from this. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. That's just, uh, it's disappointing. Very, very disappointing. You know who else was disappointed? The big telecom companies. You know Why? Senate confirms FCC Chair Rosenworcel to another term, narrowly avoiding a Republican majority. Look like, at the picture they picked for her here. She looks very happy here. <laughs> she's her little finger like, up. Uh, well, not just, just to hang on a second there. Yeah. So at the top of her agenda is trying to reestablish net neutrality, uh, which is kind of a dark timeline thing. Like the ISPs are already looking past net neutrality. They're doing things like deep packet inspection to try to figure out what you're doing on the internet. And... Uh, you know, ways of monetizing that. We'll talk about that later in the episode. Don't worry, foreshadowing. But uh, if, because of the way that her appointment works, if she wasn't explicitly, I guess, reelected or didn't go through this process, then there would just be a vacancy for her position. So that would be not good. You got to admit, I mean, we monitor a lot of tech headlines. 
she is doing a lot, at least getting headlines for a lot. And maybe that's because, you know, liberal media. But then when you read the articles, it's not always just fluff. Yeah. So, I don't know. She seems to be doing some decent stuff. She's trying. Oh, I didn't mention the 5G stuff. They're doing the, the, the bigger focus is 5G. Secondary focus is net neutrality. But I think net neutrality is more important than the 5G focus. Yeah. So, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what, we'll see what comes of that. Could be good. You know, uh, on the news, we do a lot of headlines. We do a lot of headlines about ransomware and about, you know, people taking over Minecraft servers by pasting the wrong chat message in. Crap like that. It's almost like there's a cybersecurity shortage. U.S. faces urgent anti-hacker crisis. And you can see help wanted there. <laughs> there's it's not that many like e-letters this... on a keyboard. <laughs> Wait. It's almost like this crisis started years and years and years ago. And the government did nothing for all of those years. Wasn't it like 3% of tech workers for the government were like under the age of 30? Yes. That's like. Well, they also pointed out in here that no one wants to work for the government. People who are tech savvy don't want to work for the government. So they're just like, well, if we can't get tech people, I guess we'll get music people. I saw that. (laughs) Yeah. Like they, they, and they said accountants, accountants and music people. And I was like, that's not... Wendell, do you think those two things can be interchanged? Uh, <laughs> what if we just put you in a music business right now? <laughs> music is like math. You could figure it out. I think that would probably end very badly, or it would be something unique and somehow haunting and unsettling. They'll come up with beautiful, elegant solutions that won't stop the Russians for 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they say that there are 600,000 positions that need to be filled in terms of cybersecurity. What they don't really talk about, though, is that a lot of businesses, like when we're talking about like the commercial sector, they don't actually care about security. And so if this is the government saying we need to pro, you know, sort of proactively have businesses care about security by like figuring stuff out for them, okay, maybe. But they have a staffing problem, one. They have a training problem, two. And three, the government salaries aren't going to compete with the private sector salaries. And it actually says that. It says, hey, when, whenever we do actually get somebody in the government that knows what they're doing, the private sector immediately hires them for three to five times what we can pay. And so, even even just not thinking about pay, like think about the technologies you're probably going to work with in the government versus what you might be working private sector. Yeah. That's not real exciting if you're into that kind of stuff. Yeah. 600,000 jobs. Nubbin's still unemployed. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, that's not... That's... Uh, we could get him in a government security job. He could patch WordPress. He knows enough to do government security. He's going to know enough more than these accountants and musicians that are coming <laughs> in. Yeah. That's very true. Uh, you know who else is, uh, you know, sort of taking a proactive approach because there's not enough people? The U.S. military has reportedly acted against ransomware groups. Now, when they say acted against, they mean doing things that only the military knows how to do. Well, they didn't say what they did. The, yeah. the phrase was imposed costs. <laughs> like could it be cost, cost of, of human lives? life yeah could it be money who knows i seem to remember that wasn't there a rocket attack on a building somewhere in the middle east because it was like oh we figured out that everybody was operating on the floor of this building we couldn't really figure out how to turn it off so we turned to the rockets that was a thing that happened i don't know if that was the u.s but well, uh, remember the truck that they got in afghanistan as they were flying out remember that one? Oh, that yeah. was a family of nine mostly Ooh. children oh yeah mm. But they were hardened cyber criminals like Assange, right? They were delivering water. <laughs> no, they were hardened cyber criminals. But and the, it was a rousing success. But the water had nanobots in it or something, right? I mean, they were actually <laughs> even more innocent than Assange. Assange <laughs> did do something. <laughs> <laughs> it seems impossible. Speaking of people that did do something, report Apple CEO Tim Cook engineered a secret $275 billion deal with China. Now, the thing this, is, I mean, does this not clarify all those headlines? Yes. Every time we're like, wow, Apple just does whatever China says. What is this about? Now we know. Now we know. This deal's from 2016. That was the part that I thought should have been in the headline. This deal is from 2016. It's five years. And it was a five year deal. So, what's going on now? They extend it into 2022 if no one has any complaints. And I don't think they do. Yeah, they got to re up. I have to say, I mean, it's terrible, but I also, there's part of me that has a a grudging respect for China (laughs) that they could get that deal and like they just strong armed Apple into doing whatever they wanted. I'm like, why doesn't our government do that? (laughs) Uh, 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 There's a lot of fun things you could say there. Do you remember when we had a president that fought the big media companies and how that Uh, went? That's true. (laughs) 
Everybody take a long, awkward drink of water. And re- and reflect on the uh, on the destruction of uh, civilized society. <laughs> Just... Speaking of destruction of civilized society, guess who's getting on board the uh, the we need a company in our borders to get rockets into orbit. Concerned about SpaceX, France to accelerate reusable rocket plans. I think it was twenty thirty was oh, the I, year. The name of the uh, the name of the company. I can't remember. It was it was a hilarious name for a company. Ariane Group is to develop a new small lift rocket called Maya or Maya by 2026. Oh, Europe needs 20 reusable rockets by 2026, and by presidential decree, not really presidential decree, but by French decree, that'll definitely happen. Prime Minister decree. <laughs> definitely. Yeah, but the big happen. thing. What you're not. What you're leaving out here is this is the hardcore French socialists saying maybe we have to go private sector. <laughs> I, not only will they okay they'll go private sector I, but I don't think they'll be successful even if they go private sector there's a lot of special sauce that goes into the reusable rocket stuff we'll see I suppose yeah Yeah. Uh, remember when we do the stories about um, the uh, court cases and somebody always has to go and pay like $15 or $20 to get a copy of the court case and then it says oh don't share that and then somebody well, runs- unless but remember, sometimes when it's like a thousand pages of stuff that you need, then you start paying per page. Yeah, that's and not pleasant. It becomes pleasant. unrealistic. Yeah. Those are the worst ones. And remember, somebody wrote a browser plugin that said, hey, if anybody that's using this plugin has paid for this, you don't have to pay again because that's crazy. And uh, yeah, there, there was some legal action there. There was some, some legal action, yeah. And then and it was like, no, no, this is totally okay. Well, the free Pacer bill is advancing through the Senate Judiciary unanimously. Ron Wyden and somebody else is sponsoring this. So you still have to pay filing fees. So the filing fees are probably going to go up because now there's no fees to get stuff out of Pacer. Except uh, it's like three years, something like that. Was it Was it you can't get court stuff, uh, you, you can't get the records for three years after the thing? I missed this story, so I'm it, not sure. It was also, the people that were against this were fighting so hard, but their argument was so baseless <laughs> that they were able to solve every complaint by adding a box that says, I won't use this illegally. <laughs> they could harass people in the court system because it has their real addresses and stuff. Yeah, it's all right. They could do that anyway. A, I mean. a checkbox, well, just like, you know, when you go to a website and it's like, you're over 18, right? You're over 21, right? It's like, yeah, sure I am. There is some concern about that, although I imagine that this is probably not the kind of court document that goes in there, but you did have, just have a trial where news agencies were trying to dox the jurors. Yeah. <laughs> Why Fair. couldn't that happen with a currently different ongoing trial that has lots and lots of seized FBI evidence that was disallowed at trial? Imagine the circus there's going to be if Assange goes on trial in the U.S. Oh, actually, yes, that will be, that be a circus. Yeah. That will never be allowed to happen. He's going to be McAfee. I think Epstein is more... <laughs> I'm worried about the algorithm picking up on that. Oh well, yeah, they already have. <laughs> they heard, they right heard Andrew, and, and then they heard Epstein. <laughs> and we also have, uh, you know, a lot of stuff actively being suppressed on that front. So, Woo. <laughs> speaking of things that probably should be suppressed, Clearview AI is on track to win a U.S. patent for facial recognition technology. Remember Clearview? <sighs> it's basically crimes against humanity. It. A lot of states are fighting them still, right? Isn't it kind of weird that you're trying to get a patent while you're actively being sued constantly? <laughs> Some states have banned it completely. I know cities have. Yeah. Well, I mean, you could get a patent on technology that could never be used legally, I suppose. Then you just don't use it legally. <laughs> hmm. Oh, sorry. Virgin Media find. 50,000 euro after spamming 451,000 people who didn't want marketing emails. 50,000 pounds. Oh, it's pounds, sorry. But I, we know people, we know several people that ha- would be more than happy to pay 50,000 pounds to send 451,000 people email. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the crazy thing is only one guy complained. <laughs> one person caused that 50 grand. The and- the amount of people who 
try to get rid of the unsubscribe <laughs> button at the bottom of their email. I'm like, you cannot do that. That is illegal. You'll get in trouble. <laughs> Can we make it say, I want to not, 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 not unsubscribe? And it's just like, yeah. No. No, we can't do that. <laughs> hmm. But the yeah. best thing is uh, they only got 6,000 new people to come back to the newsletter. These are people who had unsubscribed. So they're trying to get them back. So out of those 400,000 they subscribed, they got 6,000 back. Wow. So they're paying like 800 a person. That's, you know, they probably thought this was a successful campaign. <laughs> Maybe. All things considered. <laughs> Think how much brand recognition you have now. Ugh. I hate it. I hate this reality. <laughs> it is the darkest reality. But, you know, there's a tiny ray of hope in the darkest reality, and that's from Germany. German coalition backs ban on facial recognition in public places. So yeah, you say that, Wendell, but I'm pretty sure this is non-binding. Yes. Yeah, it's it's not it's not actually against the law. It's just a ban. <laughs> Please don't do this. But if you do, we'll look the other way. Please, government, don't do this in public spaces. If you're a private business, I guess it's fine. If you're a private business that the government is contracting, that's also fine. Yeah. Which is really the darkest. It's like, oh, we really want to use this technology, but we can't use it ourselves. But we could pay a company to do it for us. Speaking of which, <laughs> that could almost fit this headline. New German government coalition promises not to buy exploits. This is absolutely, they are lying through their teeth. There's also no non-binding. Way. Yeah. Yeah. Th there's no way. There's no way that they will do this. this is, these are both... Both of these articles is a new government looking to get headlines. Yes. I think um, like the way that this headline could have some teeth is they should continue to buy the exploits and then immediately publish them. That would do the most good. <laughs> the German taxpayers might have an issue with that. <laughs> and I might as well if I was a German taxpayer. But they would be doing the world a service. They would be, you know, it's like, good job, lads. That's amazing. Somehow I don't think they would care. Probably not. You know who else doesn't care? Jeff Bezos about this headline. Italy finds Amazon 1.30. Oh, oh. oh, did it not go? What the, oh, it's a driver crash. Oh, no. Give it a second. Oh, it's. Do, 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 it's still... Do, 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 do. I've still got video, so I think you're good. Okay. Now I can't see the headline. I just see Ryan's beautiful face. There you go. Oh, that's so small. Italy finds Amazon 1.3 billion for abusing its market position. Now, the really interesting thing about how they were abusing their market position, I mean, that's a given. Uh, how they were abusing their market position has to do with the Amazon marketplace. And this was fascinating. So if you sell, uh, let's say, a bidet, a toilet seat bidet, it's like an, it's an upgrade for your toilet. Everybody should consider it. They're, they're kind of fun. I miss it in Taiwan. It's actually, it's like, I should get one of those for the house. Anyway, if you sell it through the Amazon warehouse and you sell it directly, Amazon Warehouse makes more money off of you than directly. And if you, in your marketplace, in your store as a third-party seller, I can sell it both ways. And if I sell it directly, Amazon will de-emphasize the selling direct to the point that it's a very small option that no one will ever click on versus the other listing. It doesn't give them equal weight. And that was pretty much the only reason they cited, or the main reason that they cited for this ruling. Well, you also, that's the only way to be part of Prime. Yeah. So if they do prime specials, which they do constantly, you cannot be a part of it unless you're part of that program. Because Amazon wants to ship it. But Amazon makes a lot more money that way versus having you ship it. Even if you ship it on time. Even if you follow the prime rules and it's like we got it out the door in time and it doesn't matter. Also, that's the only way that your thing will show up in an actual Amazon box. Oh. Do you uh do you think one point three billion do you think that even made Jeff Bezos like sweat even a that. little? Yeah, they noticed that. But, you know, not, they'll probably appeal it. <laughs> well, they... Is it enough for them to stop doing that program? Probably not. Probably not. And also, what kind of crazy parallel universe is this? It's 1.3 billion US, 1.129 billion euro. The euro's worth more than a dollar? That's not how that's designed. 
We've been having some uh, some drop offs in the dollar lately. <laughs> Not sure what's causing it. Couldn't be the money supply. <laughs> Too hot for YouTube. Stay tuned. Floatplane. <laughs> Join us on Floatplane. We've been, we've been compiling stories for that. <sighs> uh, speaking of things that are too hot. Iceland cuts power to new Bitcoin miners. So the deal with Iceland is they have lots and lots and lots of extra geothermal energy. Although now it appears not so much extra. Not as much as they had hoped, perhaps. I have a question about this picture. What, are the, yeah. what kind of poses are these guys in? I don't understand this my, picture. My whole question when I looked at this image was like, how does this have anything to do with geothermal or Bitcoin? Or like, what is this? I guess, is it is it pickaxes? Like they're mining? You've heard of the nut, Nutcracker Suite, right? This is the, uh, the Bitcoin Ensemble. Oh, oh, you think this is ballet? Yeah, but with Bitcoin and math, cryptography. Has anybody ever done a cryptocurrency themed live dancing show? And hard hats. Oh, that would be amazing. <laughs> oh, yeah, spend your crypto to vote for your favorite person. Vote now with your phones. We need to design some sort of Broadway show designed only to confuse future historians. I feel like that's most Broadway shows. <laughs> Musicals aren't really a popular art form anymore. Or not as much as they used to be. Oh, uh, Lord, we can't say that word. Um... Oh, after outcry, government scraps shin bet phone tracking of blank carriers. Star Trek carriers. Yeah. Mm. Uh, this, Blah, this, beep. This, this, uh, this, this is in, in Israel. We reported on this last week. They're not going to. They rejected the phone tracking thing for contact. You know, figuring out who's been in contact with whoever else. Um, after a lot of people said, wait, you're doing what with their phones? I love how you keep. I can see the workflow in your head as you keep hitting dead ends of words that you can't say <laughs> and trying again. It's like element of P. Yeah, they, it's hilarious if you read their uh, their quotes in here because they're like, well, we were only going to do this a little bit, but now I guess we won't. <laughs> the subtext of that was we were already doing this so much that we, you would be super disturbed. So I have to consciously backpedal what I'm saying so that you don't freak out. Good sign, though. Is it? Well, it's better than the opposite. <laughs> oh, this next story is terrifying. It's amazing. It's a uh, silver eye dye. That's what I wondered about. I also wondered about it. China modified the weather to create clear skies for political celebration study. They were having a big shindig at, uh, I don't even know if I can say that in a happy context. At the square. In the city now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. At the square with the, you know, there was a thing and it was very bad. Nothing happened she there. Yes, you should look at it. Well, they wanted clear skies, so they seeded the skies with silver iodide. And that also reduced the pollution. And they're, it was they're kind of incredulous. incredulous. It's, they're, they're looking well, at it. It rained. Of course there's going to be less pollution. The water washes away. The, go ahead. Well, it knocks it out of the sky, too. All that air pollution that they've got. So you just schedule a shower right before the event, and everything's great. Yeah, it was like the day before they set it up, so it rained, and then it was better. Which, on one hand, I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. But on the other, I'm like, does that cause problems with weather patterns in other parts of the world oh, or like other provinces? If what? you dump from those clouds there, that means those clouds are not dumping somewhere else. Right. Think about well, dams and rivers and yeah. how this is going to play out. <laughs> well, and then like the, the stuff they use for it, I was like, does that have any health effects if it's accumulated a, a lot over a long time? Do it's we a, know? It's a monument to the hubris of man. Yeah. I, mean, I think it's very, very, very small particles, although that could be worse, I guess. Well, and over time, I mean, if you do it enough, if you do it for enough festivals, that accumulates. How long does it take to break down? And, there was and you know, guy. eventually it won't just be festivals. Yeah. Uh, there was that guy that turned gray because he was taking silver iodide constantly for like a couple of years. That's yeah, so. colloidal silver. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I guess it's slightly different, but not if you drink a lot of rainwater. Uh, I mean, who knows? We don't you know You probably that. have to drink a whole lot. <laughs> Technically, we all drink rainwater. I wonder if it's good for radiation, because I died for your pituitary radiation protection. That's potassium I died. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, there's, there's so many different versions. I couldn't... I looked it up because I was curious, and like I found one article on PubMed that was like, we're doing a little bit of research to see how like repeated you know exposure to it will do anything, but we're not really sure yet. And I was like, should we be doing that if we don't know <laughs> know what it does? Really, Krista, is that a question you're asking? Yeah. There's there's a we lot of be using. 
Go ahead. Untested things. As <laughs> uh, he okay. quarantines. I was going to say, there's a lot of that untested thing going on <laughs> in the modern oh, hey. world. You say as I'm quarantining, but if that's what this is, I'm all over it. <laughs> it's nothing. I was right all along. And I'm going to be so smug. I if told you. If that's what it is. If that's, I don't know that's what it is. You know what else we don't know what it is? Chinese rideshare app Didi to delist from the New York Stock Exchange. So they got the early 2016 Apple treatment. They don't know who to write the check to. So they've, they're, they're voluntarily delisting from the New York Stock Exchange because they've got problems at home in China. Well, no, this was... Remember, their regulatory scrutiny happened after they went to the New York Stock Exchange instead of the Hong Kong Exchange. Yeah. This was them being corrected. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but they're doing it voluntarily. They, they, oh, they, right. they, they totally were very clear and they said, we've got to fix some of our stuff. We're going to voluntarily do this. It's like, no, you must not have foreign dollars corrupt your stuff. Okay. Sounds good. Our next story, we're switching. What is this? Robots? We're switching to robots? Yes. Robots is yep. the, the next thing. So, robots. DeepMind cracks not conjecture that bedeviled mathematicians for decades. I love this. This is amazing. DeepMind actually figured something out. This is being verified, but it looks like DeepMind came up with a solution. This is like to do with extra dimensional knots. Yeah, say, I, I, I'll be honest. I read this article and I was like, I don't understand what's happening here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's, you know, those angles and all that stuff are, yeah, that's a lot of math. So it's cool to see DeepMind doing something other than video games and regular games. <laughs> and AI and other other deep learning things, but yeah, math is a really fun thing to turn AI loose on because it's a little easier to deal with and verify and make sure that the thing that you're looking at has actually moved the industry forward and not just some sort of clever illusion. I think we get in trouble there though because that creates the possibility of black box mathematics that then will be used as part of a a governance. You know, <laughs> like this box said that you were driving poorly and we have to take your license. It, we, how does the box know that? No one right. <laughs> well, that's true of any AI stuff. The box probably also has a deep racial bias. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, what data set was it trained on? <laughs> you're not allowed to have a driver's license. Why? Because of your heritage. But what? <laughs> <laughs> because people like you have a higher chance of accidents. And it's like, <laughs> what do you mean people like me? <laughs> people in your data set. What does that mean? <laughs> Well, you, can, you can't have a black box mathematician, but you can have a black box DJ. The, that radio DJ you hear might already be a robot. Putting music together? No. The robots have already taken your job. I'm sorry. Well, it's, I listen to the, the Christmas station this time of year because I'm sappy. And there's nothing like artistic about how they arrange that. <laughs> they just play the same like 15 songs over and over. Oh, this uh. is not about the song selection. This is literally the guy talking. Oh, I, yeah, I missed that. Yeah, he's uh, they took his voice, and there's so much of his voice because he's been recorded for years and years and years. They were able to synthesize every every aspect of it. Well, to be fair, I mean, even doing the commentary on Christmas music, it's just like, oh, this is my favorite Christmas song from this year. Yeah, what's yeah the, it uh, is a, like, who's looking for DJs? Yeah. What's the, uh, the company that owns all of the radio stations? Clear something? Clear Channel. Clear Channel. Clear Channel probably owns the rights to that guy's voice and his employment contract. And that's the very sad thing. Oh, if they'll they, just fire him, yeah. If they do that, he should at least be able to make money on that from now until the end of time. Because they're going to make money on that from now until the end of time. But sadly, I don't think that's how the, the, the rights for that work here in America. I don't think anybody's going to be looking for it in 10 years. Because <laughs> they can. I have hate their, it when people talk to me on the radio. Uh, I, would, I would be fine talking to some sort of virtual AI assistant that's telling me about all the stuff that it did for me. It's like, look, I've tried, I've, I've tried very hard to find a selection of music that you will find uplifting. And it's like, well, you can try, but... <laughs> Your AI would be so sad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Sir, exactly. are you pleased with me? And it's yeah. like... Uh... Yeah, it's fine. I mean, let's, uh... let's put on some more Weird Al. It's like, no, please, it please, would, sir, no. It would make a sad face like this next robot. <laughs> a new humanoid robot has the most advanced and realistic facial expressions yet. This is... You should watch the video. Yeah, say, so can you scroll down the video? They should really see the video. The video, I don't want to show too much of the video, but it's it's definitely a... Uh, uh, oh, it's loading. A very... Uh, okay, well... Maybe YouTube's been weird today. Maybe it's not, not loading. I don't know. It doesn't like me. You should go watch the thing because, oh boy, it is absolutely 
insane how much articulation this robot has. I think it, it's, it's crazy. It's still got a little bit of like the uncanny valley, but I think part of that too is because it's like all gray. It definitely has less uncanny valley than any robot that I've seen. Yeah. In ever, I think. Um, but you know, there's this human thing to make it anthropomorphic. Now people actually built it to do this. This is not natural. It doesn't really have like AI or anything. Yeah. And it doesn't. So like, it's only really realistic from like the neck up and then it does do like hand gestures and stuff, but like everything else you can still see like all the wires and stuff running from it. Yeah. It doesn't have functional legs and, and his little robot buddy here in the background is just uh, pure, <laughs> pure existential dread. That's what that expression is. Are you one. guys seeing all the, the metaverse stuff? Everything everybody's doing in VR, everybody's leaving the legs off. <laughs> yeah. It's be a legless world eventually. Well, legs are hard to animate, you know? I can't wait for this technology and VTuber technology to cross over. Where we've got this thing that somebody's puppeteering from somewhere else, and that's like the most popular YouTuber ever. It's by somewhere else, you mean Beijing. <laughs> <laughs> or you could get your own robot version of the streamer of the vtuber oh oh yeah that's a dark reality i'm pretty sure that that's already a thing with those uh what was it the hatsune miku like virtual companion things you can buy in japan but at least hatsune miku isn't a real person mm. well, it's, it'd be more distressing if someone could buy like a little representation of you <laughs> store.level1text.com <laughs> speaking of which Inside Tesla as Elon Musk pushed on unflinching vision for self-driving cars. This, this talks about self-driving cars, but it's really about the accidents with self-driving cars and how after all of the accidents that make national news, Musk brings all of his engineers into a room and he's like, we need the car to not run into anything ever. And like, you know, he's like, man, that was a really good speech. I'm such a good leader. And it's like, what? Do you think they were trying to make it crash? Maybe it's the constant marketing pushes you make for it. Think about, well, yeah, that's the that's the point I wanted to make is if you look at this timeline and when these horrible meetings happen where it's like, listen, this is bad. We have to fix this. Think about what he was saying to the press the next day. Right. Full self-driving. Full self-driving. Yeah. Full autonomy. <laughs> you don't. Yeah. Better. Don't worry about it. Yeah. I, I, I thought you were going to go somewhere else with the timing. It's like all of these meetings were after the horrible accidents and not before. Well, yeah, that's another good point. <laughs> I mean, there are there are meetings after the accidents, but also before. Do you think any of those engineers have the balls to be like, well, uh, Mr. Musk, maybe you should stop telling everybody that this is full self-driving. <laughs> maybe that's part of the problem. No, yeah. it totally is full self-driving, just if you're not an idiot. Well, and it's like, but you can't trust the public. <laughs> like, ugh. They also, the article author does a really good job pointing out how there was a time when Tesla cars also had radar, and one of the accidents was a car that ran into a thing that should have been easily detectable with radar. And it doesn't say it, but it goes, you know, radar wasn't operational at that time because Musk was trying to figure out a way to do it away with radar because it costs too much. I think he was, was like, let's just do cameras. Trailer, sideways. Yeah. It was like, oh, that's the sky. That was not the sky. It was mm -hmm. a tractor trailer. But the radar should have stopped that. It did not. Don't so. trust marketing is the point of that story. <laughs> Meanwhile, at Mercedes. Mercedes gets AV approval for German roads. So this is Mercedes experimenting with full self-driving like technology, which is not actually full self-driving. It is really just driver assist technology. That is a good looking road. <laughs> They're the first. The first to level three that passed this, uh, this crazy thing. Tesla has not done it. You think there's going to be another meeting? If there's a meeting going on right now, today. It's like, I know you all were planning to take off Christmas, but we've got to do better than Mercedes. Well, you're going to be here with us, right, Elon? And he's like, no, no, i got to go see my 10 kids. <laughs> oh, he's not doing that. Uh, he's got to go skiing in Colorado. I also like our next story because it's kind of foreshadowing. Tyson Foods plans to spend $1.3 to automate meat plants. They're looking at what's happening at Kellogg's, which we're going to cover in the business section. And uh, they're saying, you know what? We can just head this problem off at the pass. Well, not only that, but this whole anti-work thing that's going on. Yeah. They got to be feeling that. We could just pay more. No. 
<laughs> no. We'll never well, do that. Well, they are going to pay more, but they're going to pay for robots. Yeah. But ultimately, that'll be less, because once you get the robots paid off, that's just free labor. Now, do you, you think that that leads to a better piece of chicken or a worse piece of chicken? I think ultimately that leads to a better piece of chicken, but at first it's worse. It's probably worse. Well, and then you have, I guess it opens up new jobs because you need people to take care of them. And then they underpay the people who are taking care of the robots. And then we end up in the same situation like 10 years down the line. I think we also get in a situation where if they put all kinds of sensors and stuff on the machine, we get this crazy machine learning data set about producing the optimal piece of raw chicken. Raw. Which can be converted to human meat easily. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be the new mobster thing. Instead of them having pig farms, it's like robot robotic chicken processing facilities. Uh-oh. It's like we can dispose of bodies easily on a pig farm. We can dispose of bodies easily by letting the robots do terrible, terrible things to it. That's just what they've been trained to do. Woo! Oh, we're just, we're just skipping right to it. Inside the experiment to create Mars on Earth. This is kind of more of an art project, I would say, than a... Uh... I've read about this a lot. They didn't talk about how much people break into this to say, oh, look, what's going on? It's basically people set up a dome in the desert and are kind of LARPing as people who live on Mars to see what problems they run into. <laughs> One of the problems they will not run into Mars are the people coming to harass them. Oh, well, you don't know that. <laughs> well, but, or that will be a much bigger problem if it happens. Yeah. But then we need to start taking space pistols. So. Whether they are collaborating. Seems like very cramped quarters. Very, I, very I would not enjoy quarters. that. I like what do that. You think, oh, you, you, you go, Ryan. What do you think the level of, like, daily arguments and or daily sexual tension is in that little bubble <laughs> i feel like the arguments would get even if it wasn't an outright like explosion argument there would always be like a tension yeah where it was like get out of my way i'm trying to get to the frozen peas look they have it, all of this dried stuff you know what they don't have a picture of here is the bathroom <laughs> i thought you were gonna say astronaut ice cream because i also thought about that it's just a hole outside <laughs> They won't decompose. They're not allowed to go outside unless they're in their suits, are they? I think, aren't they trying to make it realistic? Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Musk wants to get off this planet. Yeah, this is not, not great. Uh, you know who else doesn't want to come back to this planet quite so quickly? Ugh. But they're, you know, they have near misses and, and it's a little scary. A little bit, a little bit sphincter puckering. Space station dodges space debris from decades old Pegasus rocket. So this wasn't the weapons test debris. This was yet more debris that just happened to be in orbit. Just filling space up with the junk, just like we filled up this planet with junk. Uh oh. Oh, there we go. Tab didn't load. Oh, we just skipped. <laughs> we could just. I don't know. Okay. Oh, it's chaotic. DeepMind tests the limits of large AI language systems with 280 billion parameter parameter model. Blah, blah, blah. So not only is it doing math, it's also now trying to do natural language. So it's like GPT three is one hundred seventy five billion, so quite an improvement. Do you think? Um, I really think that there's an opportunity to study like what GPT three does with AI Dungeon and what this DeepMind thing does with AI Dungeon, because if it immediately goes to, you know, like Willy Wonka stuff, if the both of them do that, that says something about our. our culture and the data set that we're feeding these AIs. I think we would just expect it to be more descriptive of Willy Wonka, right? There's it's a, definitely going to go the same place. Remember the episode of Star Trek where the aliens accidentally abducted humans and they couldn't get them back to Earth and there was only one human novel about a, a crappy uh, casino um, and the aliens read the book and they're like, oh, this must be like the type of environment that humans like existing in. And so they'll put them in there. That's going to happen. That There's going to be something that, you know, discovers human DNA and deep mind. And it's like, Oh, deep mind is going to create the ideal human environment. And then it's going to be like the Wonka verse that we experienced in AI dungeon. <laughs> the worst Wonka verse where you rip <laughs> off his face and become the factory owner. I mean, it's going to, the, the AI is going, probably going to outlive humanity. So, I mean, why not? How, how close will they get to chocolate in that scenario? It'll look and you know act like chocolate, but they won't have any idea what the taste is. Also covered in Star Trek. That was also covered in the Matrix when they were talking about steak, and they're like, "We don't really know what 
steak really tastes like. We just know what the Matrix thinks it tastes like. Uh, Chris says Star Trek did it first. Oh, sorry. <laughs> what have you guys seen the trailer for the new Matrix movie? Yeah. It looks... <laughs> There's oh, a weird. discussion yeah, on, kind on of the bizarre. Form. I can't decide if I, I'm interested in it or not. I wonder if they're t- deliberately trying to do the whole uncanny valley thing with the cgi like putting a thin veneer of cgi even over the live action scenes just to make it a little bit uncanny valley it it feels too clean like something i liked about the original matrix's art direction was like it felt a little bit gritty oh yeah but now it feels like just too sterile well, but that might be a yeah, conceptual about, choice i think don't about know. like when you're playing gta it's like you know you get the really high rise you know apartment in the in the, in the the really big building, you know, that's millions of dollars after you do your heist, and it's super clean like that. It's yeah. un- unrealistically clean. Well, I guess we'll see. Yeah, I don't know. It's pretty scary. And then finally, our last story. <laughs> Exit pod. Sarko <laughs> suicide capsule hopes to enter Switzerland. Yeah. So this is this is one was the three D printed one, right? Yeah. yeah. And it did get uh, approval. It's being displayed in, in art museums and like art galleries right now. And there's part of me that was like, you know, I used to go to art galleries to like get hope about the world. And now the best hope we have is a suicide capsule. <laughs> what does that say? I mean, I yeah, could... but I don't think it's, they're not necessarily marketing it toward you, Krista. They're marketing it toward people who are in horrible, horrible pain and are never getting better. Yeah. Or even just people that wake up every morning and it's like, I can't control my bodily functions anymore. I'm tired of this. It's time for it to be over. Yeah. And here's the thing that immediately came to my mind, and I can't think of a, a, any reason for this. Why do we not use this for capital punishment? Oh, uh, yeah, that's a good question. It is absolutely painless. You just go to sleep. <laughs> you could pretend you're going into the future like one of the cryopods in Futurama. And you just <laughs> don't wake up again. Although, like, imagine if you did 3D print that. I mean, we don't have a printer big enough for that. Those Some of those parts are really big. Yeah. But imagine if you could construct this in your house and then someone finds that. What a weird find. Yeah. <laughs> the other thing I, I thought about, too, was, like, what if you're taller than that little pod? Well, you could just fold up. I mean, I'm sure you it's Just fun. curl up into it. Christy, you called it an exit pod because obviously you're comparing it to the exit bag. Right. Which you can put together for like 50 bucks. This is useless. <laughs> you can just put... be in your... Wouldn't it be more comfortable to just be in your bed? Yeah. It's the holidays. People are most depressed. <laughs> <laughs> this time of year. This time of year. Become undepressed by joining the You know how when you buy a new car during the holidays, they put the big bow on it? A great way to be able to put the big bow on that machine. Oh. Your house. And they put like commercials for it on TV. <laughs> Finance it for only a hundred payments of fifty nine ninety nine. I was gonna say get undepressed by working on your Devember project and showing us all at the forum. And then you can be depressed after you don't win. Oh. <laughs> That's sad. No, it's fine. Alright, what do we got lined up for tomorrow? Oh, I, I looked at the one tab but I don't remember. There's a lot of business stories. Yeah. I think it's business and social, probably. Neat. So, 